All right, the agenda is on the sideboard. You've already completed your warm up. If you have questions, I'll go over that real quickly. Um, in our planner, we need to write our homework, after which we need to make sure that we finish the inequalities today, graphing inequalities and finding solutions. We did equations yesterday. Today we need to do inequalities, okay? So we're gonna finish that in our interactive notebook. If we have time, then I'll go over arithmetic sequences. If we don't, then I'll do that tomorrow, okay? Your homework video, it will be sent to your remind at two o'clock, 150 probably. I think I said it for 150, not five or something. Um, by accident but either way two o'clock it is also on canvas as well planner planner check off the stuff that you did on yesterday if you watched the video check it off okay if you completed the homework check it off if you studied notes check it off if you didn't do those things don't check them off i'm gonna pause for the calls Today is Wednesday, Math 1. Don't forget to watch the video. Shh. And complete your homework, okay? Please make sure that you study your notes on graphing, equations, and inequalities. Please study all your notes on graphing equations and inequalities because that's what your quiz is on this week. The quiz will be Friday. Any questions? Yes, baby. Yes. You can go back and watch the video. We did like a whole folder. It was just like critical. Oh, yeah. I had someone help me with the folder. Oh, okay. What's that? It's great. Tell them what. Thank you. You was talking though. Here, come on. It is. Okay, 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 okay. All right, warm up. No tutoring today. I can't do. I I, tr I tried to figure out in my head how it was going to work, but they pulled me into a conference, so I'm not going to be able to do it. Be realistic. It ain't gonna happen because I know that one's gonna go over. I already know. It is what it is. All right, here we go. What is it, babe? I can do tomorrow. Yeah, I can do tomorrow. Yeah, I can do tomorrow. I couldn't do that anymore. Oh. All right, let's look at this one. It says the area of a circle. Does anybody remember the formula for area of a circle? A is equal to pi. Power squared times the yep yep power squared. If this is the area here, then we substitute a here. We know that pi is three and fourteen hundredths, and we're trying to figure out what the radius is so we can find the diameter. If we know the radius then we can find the diameter by multiplying the radius by 2 because this is half of the diameter. Okay, so in a circle, this would be the radius from the center to the edge. This is the radius. The diameter is all the way through the center to the edge. So let's solve for R first. We're going to get rid of the 3 and 14 hundredths by dividing both sides by 3 and 14 hundredths. Get my count. But it's supposed to be 3.14. Sorry, that's a typo. So we're going to do 111 and 6 tenths divided by 3 and 14 hundredths. This is going to give us. 35 point, let's, let's go ahead and truncate. Let's do 35.54. 
Okay. It shouldn't be six though, because this is a four. So it would be point, it'd just be point five. All right, so on this side, Shh, what's wrong? What are we talking about? What are we talking about now? Okay, that's fine. It's fine. Just keep it. All right. So now we're going to, what's the opposite of squaring a number? No, not dividing. No, not multiplying. No, not adding. Square root. The opposite of squaring a number is finding the square root. Okay? So the square root of r squared is just r. So let's type in the square root of whichever, if you use the 3.1 and you got a different number right here, 35.6 or whatever, then just use that, please. I'm going to do the square root. How did I type in the square root button? Second x squared. Then type in 35 and 54 hundredths or 35.6. And here this will give me about, about 6. Okay. Put the squiggly lines. If the radius is about six, then the diameter is about what? No, not three, 12. Okay. Number two, a straight line is 180 degrees. So all these angles added together, this angle plus this angle plus this angle, all add up to 180 degrees. So we're going to add these numbers together. What's 37 plus, plus 62? 99. So we got 99. So that's 99 plus X all should equal to 180. Right? So when we subtract 99 from 180, what is 180 minus 99? So that means that X degrees or degrees for this X is equal to what? Okay. Number three, we're going to find the area of just the shaded region. So first we're going to find we're going to find the area of the circle, and then we're going to find the area of the rectangle and subtract the areas. The circle is A is equal to pi R squared. Here, pi is 3 and 14 hundredths. Let me put 3 and 14 hundredths. My R, remember my diameter, see from here to here, the diameter is 5. What's half of 5? So the radius is 2.5. Oh, yeah. So now we're going to type this in our calculator to see what the area of the circle is. So we have 3 and 14 hundredths times 2.5 square it. Square button is right, is right here. That's what it should look like in your calculator. So now let's press enter. What number does that give us? So let's write that down. Okay. And this is meters to the second power because it's area. And now we're going to find the area of the rectangle. How do you find the area of the rectangle? Length times. So that's going to be what times what? Length 10 times 5 or either way. It doesn't matter. Okay. When you multiply those together, what do you get for the area? So we get 50 meters to the second power. So to find the area of just the shaded region, we're going to subtract the 19 point blah, blah, blah from the whole thing. So let's subtract those. And what does that give you? That gives you 30 point what? 37 meters squared.
triangle A, B, C is a right isosceles. So that means this angle is 90. What are, oh, wait a minute, that's scaling. Dang it. I'm doing scaling. <sighs> Do it another way. That's right. Yes. Isosceles, not scaling. Scaling is where none of the sides are congruent. Isosceles is where two are. Why do you remember that? Well, that's a good idea. So that means that since these two sides are congruent, these two opposite angles are also congruent. So this one we know to be 90. The other two are the same. So we got 90 plus X plus X. All should equal to what degrees? 180. So let's solve for X. Combine the X's together. How many is that? 2X. So we got 90 plus 2X. The values for X is the same, so I'm using the same letter. What do I do to solve for X? What goes first? I heard two different things. Subtract 90. Very good. When I subtract 90, this gives me 2, sorry, 2X is equal to 90. Now what do I do to get the value of X? Divide by 2. So what's X equal to? 45. So each one of these is what degrees? 45. Okay, pause for the cost. Yes, baby? Take out your notebook so we can finish. We're on number five. All right, we have to write this in slope-intercept form. We got to do that first before we can graph it. This is 0 is equal to 3y minus 8x plus 15. And y'all finished this part yesterday, right? Yeah. So now I'm just going over it. Shh. Make corrections. If you didn't do it, do it with me now. Okay? All right. In order to get y by itself, I'm going to move the y term over here. So I'm going to subtract 3y on both sides. When I subtract 3y over here, this is just going to give me 3y, negative 3y, sorry, is equal to Negative 8x plus 15. Questions about what I did? Yes, baby. It doesn't, it don't matter. As long as you get y by itself, it's okay. It's multiple ways that you can do that. That's okay. Shh. All right. Now we make sure I'm recording. Yep. Now we're going to get y by itself by doing what? What do we do? Tan, sit up, babe. Divide everything by a negative 3. What's negative 3 divided by negative 3? 1y. 1y. Positive 1y. Very good, babe. Shh. Let's simplify, but we want to keep it as a fraction. Okay? We're going to simplify this. A negative divided by a negative, positive, positive eight, over eight over three, x. x. Please make sure x is either on the top as the numerator or out to the side, but x is not a denominator, okay? What is 15, positive 15 divided by a negative three? Negative so that's minus five. Now our equation is written in slope-intercept form. Now I can graph it. Okay. In order to graph this, I first label my M and my B. What's my M? What's my M? Eight over three. Eight over three. What do I label three as? Run. Eight. What is B? Just want to make sure you know. Yes, baby. Mm-hmm. We did. 
You weren't here for it. You was not here. That's why I keep saying watch that video. She made, she made videos to say things. Every go, day. Go to watch them. Every day it that like, you're not like, here. It was like in a way. It was in the middle of the week. I that. You know what I did just for you? On the notes, if you go in and look at the notes, I put the video above the notes. Yeah. Go, go to the page and then go to, uh, go to like projects and then it'll have notebook. And then she'll, she has all the changes and just find the title. When you find the title of the page, the video is right up under the notes. They're going to like her project. They're gonna, oh, they're like, they're like 20 minutes. Yes. I want to see the It's up to you. They're there. All right, here we go. All right. We're going to find negative five on the y axis. Negative five on the y-axis is down five from the origin. One, two, three, four, five. From here, where do I go? Up eight. Up eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. From here, where do I go? Right or left? One, two, three. Positive three is to the right three. I do not have any more space to draw any more points, okay? Questions about how I graphed it. Got it? Now we're going to prove that these two points are on the line. They are solutions, okay? And all these points in the middle are solutions, but we just can't, you know, it's hard to tell you what these actual points are because it's not, they're not whole numbers or integers, okay? They're decimals of some sort. But we're going to do use these two that we can read. But there are many more points on the line. What's the first point that we want to use? Positive three. No. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is X, this is Y. Let's prove that this is a part a solution. Substitute into the equation. What do I plug in for Y? Two. Three. What do I plug in for X? Three, Three over Any questions about how to substitute those values? All right, let's do this one. What is 8 times 3? We got 24 over what? What's 24 over 3? 8. Eight. Bring down the minus 5. All right, this is 3. What is this equal to? Is 3 equal to 3? Yes. Then this point is a solution. This point is on the line. Any questions? Let's do one more point. What's the other point that we could use? 0, negative 5. And we know because it's the y-intercept, right? But we're going to prove it. Write down the equation and substitute the x and y into the equation. If both sides are true, or I'm sorry, if both sides are equal, then that means this is a part of the solution. What number do we plug in for y? Bring down the equal. Bring down the 8 over 3. Yes, baby, I'm sorry. What do we replace X with? Zero. Zero. And then? Then, you said, and then? Okay. So you multiply zero times the fraction, what do you get? Zero. Zero. So this is zero, and we're left with what then? Negative five. Is negative five equal to negative five? Yes. Then okay. this point is a what? Solution. Got it? Are we 
All right, let's do. All right, so you are going to do number six on your own. Six. Go get the bag for your table. You're going to do six on your own. You're going to do six on your own, please. Pick two points. I'm only going to give you three minutes. And then I'm moving on to inequalities. Do six on your own. All right, when you are when you are writing this in slope intercept form, that means you're gonna get y by itself. What did any what did y'all do first? Oh, I'm glad you remember, baby. You're gonna add six to both sides. This is zero, and we're left with negative 2y is equal to, I'm going to write this first, write the x term first. Now what, say again. Because it's, it's a minus 6. Look at the sign that's in front of it. All right, so now what do we do to get y by itself? Divide everything by what kind of 2? It's a negative 2. Negative 2 goes into negative 2, positive 1 time. So we get 1y or just y. Simplify. Leave it as a fraction, 3 over 2, positive 3 over 2. Negative divided by negative is a positive. X. Positive divided by negative is a negative, and that's 3. Got it? Everybody's okay? Raise your hand if you got that part right. Right. Okay. All right. Not too shabby. Now we're going to graph. When you graph, you identify your M and your B. What's your M? Three over two. Three being the what? Rise. Rise. Two being the what? Run. What's your B? Negative three. Okay. So now we're going to find negative three on the Y axis. So negative 3 on the y-axis is 3 down from the origin. 1, 2, 3. From here, where do we go? Up 3. It's positive 3. And to the right 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Points in the opposite direction. How would I write that slope? Negative 3 over negative 2. Same thing, right? Both are positive slopes. So instead of going up 3, go down. 1, 2, 3. Instead of going to the right 2, go to the left. 1, 2. Huh? So now you're going to pick two points to prove that it is a solution, that that point is on the line. What, uh, what's the first point you want to want to try? Four, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four, comma, three. This is X. This is Y. Rewrite the equation. What do I substitute for Y? Three. Three. We got three over two times what? Four over one. So this side is already simplified. What does this give you? What's three times four? Twelve. What's two times one? What's twelve divided by two? So this is six minus three. What's six minus three? Is 3 equal to 3? No. What? No. I said no. Solution. Let's not do that. Good, babe. Good. Practice makes improvement. All right. What's another point? 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. You could have used another point. It's fine. You don't have to use these two. This is X. This is Y. 
y is equal to 3 over 2x minus 3. We're going to plug in 6 for both. Right? Oh, sorry. Thank you. All right, so we're going to multiply. Bring down the 6 first. That's right here. What is 3 times 6? 18. And then this is 2, you're right. And what does that give you? 9. This is 6. What's 9 minus 3? 6. Is 6 equal to 6? Yes. Yes, this is a solution. Okay. All right, so let's do number... Let's do number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Yeah, right. No. Not even, huh? Steak. W S S U. You know that one you know one of the days you weren't here? The, uh, yeah. when you were when you were away, one of our subs was a uh, W the W S S U. Oh they were? They're tight ankles. It's nothing like it. I loved it. It, it looks big. That's no, not that big, but I loved it. In order to graph, you have to this, you have to write the equation in slope intercept form. It's already in slope intercept form. So guess what? All you have to do is identify M and B. This is your rise. This is your run. What's your B here? Two. So let's do that. Oh. Who is talking? It's them girls. It's I knew it. It's the twins. Y'all stop. Shh. Yeah, it is. Yes, y'all are. Y'all talk all the time. Both of you talk. <laughs> okay, so look. There's a negative here. You have to decide, are you going to put the negative on the top or the bottom? I'm just going to put the negative on the top. You can't make both of them negative because a negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive. So just make one of them a negative. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to choose to put my negative on top. It could be on the bottom. Okay? All right, so now let's graph this. We're going to graph 2 on the y-axis. It's my y-intercept. It's up two from the origin. From here, I'm going to go down five. One, two, three, four, five. And to the right, one, two, three. All right, opposite direction here. Instead of going down, go up. One, two, three, four. Not enough space. This inequality is greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal. Okay, so greater than equal to means it's a solid line. Greater than means you shade above the line. All right, got it. Shh, do not forget that you can graph it in your calculator. Second plus seven, one, two. Shh. Come on. Shh. Y equals. Over here, I'm going to go all the way over to the edge, and I'm going to press enter until it's shading above the line. This is a shade above. You have to tell the calculator to do that. Okay? Now I'm going to type in my equation. I have parentheses negative 5, sorry, divided by 3. That's my fraction. Then I have x right beside the green button. 
plus two. Shh, pay attention, pay attention. Now I'm gonna press graph. And that looks like what I have, do you see? Okay. I'm gonna do it again, Shh, clear it. I'm gonna go all the way over to the edge. I'm gonna go all the way over to the end, press the arrow button over, and I'm gonna press enter until it's shaded above. That's shade above. I go over and I type in my fraction, parentheses, negative five over three, X, and then we got plus two. Graph it. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Got it. All right. So now I can choose any two points in the shaded region or on the line. I'm going to choose any point. Let me choose positive one, two. I'm going to choose two and zero. This is X. This is Y in the shaded region or on a solid line not a dash line a solid all right so now let's plug it in y greater than or equal to negative five over three x i was already getting ready to substitute Shh, don't wait just i'll be ignoring that crap we got zero here greater than or equal to negative five over three times X is 2 over 1 plus 2. This side is 0. This is negative 10 over 3. Plus what? 2. So when I do this, look. Okay. Huh? I'm going to type in negative 10 divided by three plus two. And look, that gives me a negative one, um, one third or 0.333. That is smaller than zero. So this is right. This is a solution. Open it. All right, calculators, let's go. Calculators up. Shh.